surface level B, what's your thoughts on this? You know, I got I got a lot of things. I got some numbers to, to attach to this. I think there's some pros and I think that there's some cons to this hire. What's your initial feelings on this? Yeah, I mean, when you get a guy that has, and I'm sure you'll probably touch on this in your pros, you know, head coaching experience, you know, last six, seven years uh, over at IU, very familiar opponent. Um, it's always good to add that bolster to your staff. You know, has a lot of ton of experience over the last years, his whole coaching career. And then on the defensive end, you know, I'm not sure if it wowed me, you know, outside of the experience factor. But, you know, he has a track record of, you know, some good recruiting, you know, down in Florida, some roots down there. Touch on that a little bit more, but I think that can be big time for Penn State. And, you know, similar to kind of coach uh, Kotoneki is this will probably be the most talented squad he's ever had at his uh, kind of arsenal. So yeah. that could be that will be exciting yeah. to watch for sure. We'll see kind of how he shakes and moves it. But, you know, when I first saw it, the unofficial news that uh, he was going to land, you know, like I said, it didn't wow me, but I'm excited. And I'm not also, like I've also been saying, I'm not too worried about the defense, to be honest. faithful we got the bowl game merch for you guys hoodies tees long sleeves whatever you feel like wearing we got it for the 2023 peach bowl check out the we are feeling peachy gear in the link below have fun in atlanta and looking forward to it we are what's up folks we are back another episode of the pocket b i don't know what number we're on but this thing's been rolling man and uh shoot it's been a fun year up until this point yeah, yeah, for sure. It got to be around week. I mean, NFL is what week fourteen, fifteen, so somewhere around there. Getting into this holiday season, man. Uh, bowl games, as you said, they're rolling already. Good to get some football back on the on the TV. You know, interrupt this uh, basketball stuff going on. No doubt, no doubt. It was good watching some ball. I actually did get to sit down and do that. We were um, we were doing like a holiday up my mom's, like an early Christmas holiday up my mom's with. Uh, Got all my brothers up there, which is a rare occurrence. Oh, nice. so that's fun. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. But then we ended ended the weekend. Four of us were all sick yesterday, so I had to stay an extra day. My mom helped us out with the kid and then drove back home early this morning and I'm feeling a lot better. But uh yeah, it's uh it's always it's always fun when you're dealing with that four four or five people in the house sick as hell. <laughs> Trying yeah. to get it after a long weekend. But um, it's been going yeah, around, man. man. Sun's going around. I got I'm fighting a little bug myself. You know, I got a little congestion and whatnot. But glad to hear everybody's all good. All good. Keeping yeah. it chugging along. A little help, yeah. mom never hurt. You know. Oh no doubt, dude. Mom's <laughs> always comes in. Always comes in the clutch. And then you know, just just plugging away. But a lot, a lot did happen this weekend. You know, we obviously are driving this conversation surrounding Penn State football, and uh, we were looking for the DC. Um, and again, I will, uh, I will, I will eat crow here. I was, I was all in on Anthony Poindexter. There's some people in the comments who've been dropping some of the information that I got as well. But um, it's looking, at least right now, that Tom Allen is going to be our next DC. Uh, nothing, nothing official. Uh, again, this is Monday, December 18th. So um, this stuff's probably going to be out a little bit later than this. But. Um, Surface level B, what's your thoughts on this? You know, I got I got a lot of things. I got some numbers to, to attach to this. I think there's some pros and I think that there's some cons to this hire. Uh, again, hypothetically speaking, if it all comes through. Right. And, um, what's your initial what's your initial feel, feelings on this? Yeah, I mean, when you get a guy that has and I'm sure you'll probably touch on this in your pros, you know, head coaching experience, you know, last six, seven years uh, over at IU. Very familiar opponent. Um it's always good to add that bolster to your staff. You know, has a lot of ton of experience over the last years, his whole coaching career. And then on the defensive end, you know, I'm not sure if it wowed me, you know, outside of the experience factor. But, you know, he has a track record of, you know, some good recruiting, you know, down in Florida, some roots down there. Touch on that a little bit more, but I think that can be big time for Penn State. And, you know, similar to kind of coach, um, Kotoneki is this will probably be the most talented squad he's ever had at his uh, kind of arsenal. So 
Yeah, that could be that would be exciting yeah. to watch for sure. We'll see kind of how he shakes and moves it. But, you know, when I first saw it, the unofficial news that uh, he was going to land, you know, like I said, it didn't wow me, but I'm excited. And I'm not I was, like I've also been saying I'm not too worried about the defense, to be honest. Yeah, I will. I will say this too. I think he had a short stint down in uh, down at Ole Miss. I think it was 2012, yep. 2015. And if you remember correctly, our class, like the 2013 recruiting class at Ole Miss, was like the number one recruiting class in the country. Yeah, they got yeah. They got you know Laquan Treadwell. Like you start Laramie Tunzel. Like you start rattling off the names. They got some guys down there. So he did have some talent when he was down at Ole Miss. And I, I I'd probably be more curious to do a little bit of an in depth study comparing like to like with that roster to our roster than maybe an Indiana roster, because to your point in my eyes, it's about the Jimmy's and Joe's and especially on defense now, right? Like you can do so much. You can come in and say, I'm a, I'm a base four, three defense, but like if you got the right guys who can move around and, and adjust an alignment here or there and still be gap sound, like you can present so many different things from like an angle standpoint in the run game that the offense then has to think about, just because you got athletes and then that opens up the arsenal to what else you can do, what else you can disguise with it, what type of pressures you can disguise with it because it doesn't, you know, a plus B doesn't always equal C because again, right. you get to things. So um, I think that's going to be unique and obviously a great thing, but to kind of touch on what you said, I'll, I'll highlight the pros first on my end, you know, line, linebacker coach background, right? We, we, if you saw that we were having some issues as well in terms of like, filling all of our spots with the hires that we had because we had a quarterback vacancy, a linebacker coach vacancy, an offensive coordinator vacancy, and a DC vacancy. And I think we only had like two spots or something like that to fill those from your your 10 limit or whatever it is. So um, if he can come in and take over the linebacker vacancy, that that alleviates some stress from Coach Franklin and uh, trying to figure out a solution for that, for that hole there. Um, two um, – obvious intensity and you saw that the players played for him um you know post game reviews everything like i thought i thought he brought a great sideline intensity so there were some conversations and some questions in the mailbag that we'll get to just surrounding something we've talked about in terms of like projecting your attitude into your room and projecting your attitude into your players and how they play for you and i don't necessarily think that's going to be an issue um, and then, you know, from a philosophy standpoint, he's a base four, three guy, you know, nickel, nickel and dime packages surrounding that as well. But uh, from a, from a baseline philosophy, I don't think much changes. And, and again, not that that really matters, you know, that, that is what it is. Um, and then the head coaching experience, like you said, I think the head coaching experience, you know, a guy who's been in your division, um, who's coached against the big dogs, who's, who's done different things to get down to the wire and or be in games with some of the big dogs. You know, I think that that ultimately helps when you start, when you start combining the masterminds of how to, how to compete in a really, really tough conference. Um, that's obviously great. But then when you start diving into the numbers, you know, you look at it, he was uh, 18 and 43 in big 10 play during his tenure at IU um, in the last three seasons. I believe he only had three Big Ten wins. Um, and then his defenses, with the exception of 2020, where I think they ranked fourth in the conference. But, again, that was a shortened COVID year. Um, pretty much were bottom half of the conference when it came to total defense. So that could be in part to, again, the Jimmys and Joes like we talk about. And I, and I kind of want to lean more towards that being the answer and why my – my initial take is, is I think the, the pros outweigh the cons in terms of the value add that he brings from a coaching tenure standpoint. Now you have to start seeing, is there sticking, is, are there sticking points within the rooms that they buy into this guy immediately? Um, and then can you come in and, you know, you got spring ball, you got, so you got, you got training camp, you got summer training camp to really start establishing yourself and your mentality and your philosophy coming into it. So um, I know that was a mouthful, but you got anything off of those points? <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, a few things. I mean, first touching on, you know, it's kind of interesting. Well, like you said, the buy-in, the buy-in factor. And I think it will be easier. You know, he seems like he had a ton of respect leaving IU and all the uh, guys, similar to what we said about Manny when he left. You know, you only see respect when he exits out the building. Um, obviously, his exit was a little different as you just rattled off those numbers, you know, 
uh, kind of leads to that. But yeah, I'm not sure if we'll see the same buy-in as we saw with Manny Diaz, but it'll be interesting to see uh, how fast he can come in and kind of rally these guys, get back up. You know, you lose a little bit of steam, you know, losing a guy like Manny Diaz. So, and as you said, the numbers weren't too great. I'm not sure if, um, you know, the team will, or the defense at least, will kind of buy into that. But I hope they do. And I think he'll have a, a good master plan, as you said, the kind of combining of the minds, going against some of these top uh, guys against in the conference. Him and Coach Franklin, I'm sure they can rattle off, you know, many things, what they've seen over the years. And finally kind of, you know, knock these, knock the... Uh, the king, king, queens off of the board, you know, that we've been trying to for so long. Uh, I got to call it what it is. So I'm excited to see what he can do. I'm excited to see. Well, I guess it's not official yet, but if he yeah. gets in there, you know, in his bowl prep, you know, will we see any influence as we have uh, we see Coach Kotoneki on the sidelines of practice or walking the field? He's got his shorts on in the cold. I respect it, you know. Uh, so we'll see if he, he can kind of imprint, get his imprint on this team. Uh, as early as you can, because as we know, that that bodes well. Yeah, I think just getting some familiarity. And, and like, the one thing I want to touch on, because it did come up in the mailbag, was just people talk about, like, comparing, right? And you're comparing and contrasting, and you're saying, like, you know, this guy is – if you're, if you're if you're as a Penn State fan sitting there saying, like, is he going to be – like, he's not going to be like Manny Diaz. Like, no matter how hard you want to try to beat the square peg into a round hole with that, like, it's not going to happen just as – Brent Pry wasn't Bob Shoup and just as Manny wasn't Brent and you, you know, you kind of go down that line, like they're not, they're not the same people and they're not going to be, there's going to be different tendencies. And I touched on that on the last episode, like I would call a game differently than you would. And and you rattle off, I like, guess just, you can't, you can't fall in that trap, but what you can fall into is kind of the expectations and what, what they bring. And then, you know, you're obviously going to, you can only judge, Coach Allen off of what he's done up until this point and kind of his philosophy. And I think, you know, maybe, maybe part of that may be skewed, right? You know, if, if he is as aggressive as Manny was with a little bit of a less talented roster and kind of trying to, trying to create and manufacture short fields and, and create some chaos, it, you will get burned a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not like it's, it's, it's a little bit harder to be a high risk. Um, high reward defense when the foundation in terms of athletes isn't there. You know what I'm saying? Like you're going to get yours, but you're going to get got more times than you get yours. If you're going to be a high risk, high reward defense with average to below average talent. Now, when you start adding above average talent, if not elite talent, and you're a high risk, high reward defense, and you can coach those guys to be fundamentally sound when you need to and understand when risks are being taken and why and how to capitalize and be sound all the way around from the whole mechanism now you find out how great of a teacher he is, and he's got a great opportunity with with some high level chess pieces to be able to to kind of mastermind some things that he may or may not have been able to do at other places that he was at. So, um, I think a big a big part too that gets lost in translation throughout all of this transition, both sides of the ball, is as we look at the players, how fast can they pick it up and gel and this and that and. It also falls on the uh, assistant coaches, you know, you know the coaches that are retained, you know, defense and offense for yeah. both new coordinators. How fast can these guys get the kind of new scheme or new ideology down? And obviously, that's who we're spending most of the time with, you know, in the meeting room. Hey, this was this last year, but we got to lose all of that. You know, forget everything. Well, don't forget everything, but forget everything that we're telling you to forget and keep retain some knowledge that can help you, you know, transfer over to these concepts that we're doing and these new concepts that we're doing now, especially for defense, you know, depending on, as you said, the aggressiveness and all of that, I don't think it will change much. Like you said, it's going to be different. It's going to be different, but how fast can you get the new terms down? But you also got to retain and keep some of that, you know, keep, uh, keep some of those, those concepts that, Hey, this is what we called it last year. It's really the same thing. We're calling it something different now and we're going to run it and hopefully run it just as smooth as we were last year when we were top, top defense. So I believe, in, I believe in the staff. I mean, you bring up a good point though with the defensive staff, right? Or just like the assistant coaches in general, there's been a lot of turnover on the offensive side, not just, not just at the offensive coordinator position, but, you know, tight ends coach, uh, offensive line coaches. I think they've been through three or four offensive line coaches since we were there. 
like you start looking at all that, like that adds you, uh, you kind of get lost in that long game of telephone when you have a bunch of turnover at the position coaching level as well, not just the coordinator, uh, coordinator level. And when you look at the defensive side of the ball, there's been relatively good consistency, um, top to bottom. Even a guy like Dion, he, you know, he played here and, and he played here under, under the Franklin tenure. So, um, you know, him, Coach Smith's been there the entire time. Uh, Dex has been here now for three or four years. So you start you start looking at the at the folks that have that have come in and are on that side of the ball. I think it's a lot easier for them to be able to 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 a understand the roster top to bottom, understand the kids you have, and be able to communicate and teach to them. And then b when you're talking about messaging from the top down, the top being the coordinator. Um, it's a lot easier to be on the same page when you have a bunch of folks who've been through the changes and who have also um, who also have familiarity working with one another. So, to me, the defensive side of the ball has has a has a has a leg up more so than even on the offensive side of the ball with that, uh, which I think is a great point yeah, that you brought up. Yeah, for sure. And like yeah. we said, looking forward to the hire when it becomes official. Hopefully, it does just to get some uh, consistency going, but. Defense will be just fine, just fine, uh, and hopefully you got to keep that. You know, we, we talk about it all the time. There's a there's a standard to a Penn State defense. Not that it's not with the offense, but, like, in history of college football, there's a there's a standard that, you know, you got to bring it on that side of the ball. So I think um, Coach Allen or whoever D.C. comes in will, will uphold that standard for sure, for sure, no doubt. <laughs> What's up, everybody? If you are a college football fan like me, if you know a college football fan that's in your life, you need to go cop this shirt. New designs dropping all the time. It's the perfect gift with the holiday season coming around. If you don't have this thing, you're missing out. Great material, great fabric. I wear it all the time. Go get yours today. So let's uh, let's do our, our our weekly brush up on the on the bowl game. Um, and I kind of want to keep this high level for you. This is just going to be a one hitter question. Simple. This could be 10 minutes. This could be two minutes. We'll see what happens. But, um, you know, we, we've touched on the minutia, you know, the matchups, the, the, the who, what, when, where, why, and hows of this game to a degree at, on several occasions. Um, and like we said, we think that this, this game is ultimately pretty simple from a matchup standpoint and what's going to win or lose it for Penn State. Um, the question I want to pose is this game, and we, we touched a little bit on it, but what does this game mean? And especially now with uh, a DC vacancy that's projected to be filled here relatively shortly, an offensive coordinator vacancy that is filled. Um, what does this game mean to Penn State as it per- as it pertains to how it projects into this off season and into next year? If that yeah, means. great question, great question. You know, I think the question or it is the answer is: Are we for real? Are we legit? You know, because you see every year, you just, let's just take this past year. You know, we had a lot of hype, a lot of buzz, big names, talent, depth, everything. And, you know, fall a little short. And that that's the story in mainstream media. You know, fluke this, you know, we don't believe in Penn State, this and that. And, you know, it's warranted, you know, for all the reasons that obviously we've talked about. So. I think a win over an, a very good Ole Miss, who a lot of people don't think we should be or they should be ranked above us, um, you know, I think a, a big win here says a lot about what's to come, about this season. You know, we were a good team this year, this year to solidify that, but also to what's to come, you know. And I don't want to fall into what kind of what happened last year with Utah because – Kind of was the same thing, you know. We put on we put on a show out there in the Rose Bowl, and that had expectations very, very high for the season that just passed. So, but ultimately, I think that's that's the job. You go out there to win, kick ass. I mean, shoot, we go steam over Ole Miss. I, you can't help but get hype for the next year, and I think that's a good thing. But you also have to, you know, put the work behind it. So, I think uh, it would solidify us. I think what's crazy is that, you know, I'm already seeing some stuff, people talking about next year's team being the most talented roster Penn State's ever had. And it's very similar messaging, like already, right? So when it, when it, to me, it's a pretty simple thing. Like with great power comes great responsibility, right? With like 
alignment and all these things that Coach Franklin's been asking for and this team's ultimately been asking for, when we start getting it, like those expectations are going to come whether you want them to or not. And if you if you go out and you beat an Ole Miss team, like you say, in, 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 a, in, a, in a pretty convincing fashion, like those expectations last year aren't going to be shit compared to what they're going to be this year because people are going to have the scars from this past year. You know what I mean? So to me, like this game means a lot, especially with these hires. Um, momentum going into spring ball. You know what I mean? Offensively, you know, good taste in your mouth, fresh face. You know, people are going to be believing in it, drinking the juice internally. I'm not worried about external stuff. I'm just talking internally. And then from a defensive side of the ball, you know, if you can retain a guy like Anthony Poindexter, which we'll dive a little bit more into, but who's going to be calling the game and, you know, may or may not have won it or whatever the defensive coordinator position as, as a whole, you can retain a guy like that, like having confidence in him being on staff still meaning something right? Like maybe he's just setting something up for a, a bigger role that could potentially come down the pipe for him or something like that. But I just feel like this game means a lot. You know, if you, if you win, I think it puts your, your program and your roster and your locker room into a completely different mindset. Um, if you lose, it's one of those things where, you know, I don't think it's make or break, but it's definitely one of those things where, a spring ball is going to be feel a lot more like get back season as opposed to, um, you know, just plugging along and, and feeling really good about about where you're at. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with it means more to us. And maybe that's hard with a biased mind as a Penn Stater. But I think it means more to us from where we've been at in the Big Ten. I know the Big Ten's realigning. But where we've been at and where we've been like kind of scratching at the door at, I think it means more to us, you know, I know Ole Miss probably sees themselves similar, but I'm not sure if they're, you know, they're they're pushing to be one of the top notch teams in the SEC. I know they are, but I don't know. I think there's a few teams I put before them before after after Alabama, Georgia. I'll say where the world, the country sees us. We're that next team, you know, after Ohio State, Michigan, but now with the realignment. Uh, you know, Oregon, USC, they're going to be competitors as well. But I still think we're right there, still scratching at the door. So the game definitely, I believe, means more to us. All right. Love it. I love it. Um, and kind of on that note, you know, I don't, I don't know if you guys going to be around. But, um, Chip Kelly had some interesting comments surrounding you and the future of college football. Yeah, yeah, definitely a interesting take. You know, I gave you, I always say, you've, uh, you were the first one that kind of gave me that, that idea of what college football should kind of turn into. So, but yeah, Chip Kelly, definitely, um, interesting take. I mean, and the revenue sharing, as you said, I think I saw Desmond Howard commented under it, like, you know, be careful. Uh, Harbaugh kind of mentioned that a few years back and no one kind of wanted to listen. So, um, yeah. it'd definitely be interesting to see how it shakes out. That's kind of the only way I could see it formulating as well now. I mean, to be fair, like Chip Kelly said, to the other sports and other university and other uh, athletic departments and other universities. I mean, we know football is king. Let's just let's just act like it. You know, there's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we do that, we move on, and ad- everybody adapts to it. It becomes normal and regular. So I'm I'm kind of on board with that type of alignment in uh, college football. It's not the college football we grew up on, your grandpa grew up on, but it is what it is becoming and is as we know it. So you kind of just have to, you know, get along with it, you know, move move on up with the pun- with the punches and everything like that. So it's, uh, it's going to be fun to watch. You know, I think the product at least is not, is only getting better. So that's, uh, that's the positive side of it, whether it's, you know, pay for play or not. You know, the product is not changing. You only get more competitive. These games are getting crazier. So uh, I'm excited to see the next shoot. Even just four or five years of college football is going to massively shift. Even more, it already has, but even more from where it is now. So Can't forget our viewers and our listeners. Uh, Mailbag Monday, great response. Um, it's going to be tough to kind of get everyone because it was a little bit of a convoluted back and forth. We appreciate the interaction for sure. Um, but let's touch on, uh, let's just touch on the, on the, 
hire with Tom, or potential hire of Tom Allen here. Um, you know, we had about 14, 15 comments on Instagram. Yeah, I'd probably say the same amount, if not more mentions on X. Um, some good, some bad, some indifferent. Uh, and I think that that's, that's a interesting take and interesting poll. When you listen to people, you know, there's, there's people who are really stoked about it. There's people who are kind of on the fence and there's people who don't like it at all. Um, but, uh, we got one from court Smith 95. Uh, I was hoping hard for coach Dex to be promoted, but I don't mind the hire. With that being said, what are your thoughts on PSU football as a whole moving forward by now showing the alignment coach Franklin has always talked about with the, with the spending big to bring in, to bring in big time hires. Um, so I think that that kind of encapsulates everything. Um, you know, Dex may or may not have turned down the job from some inside sources I had as well. Uh, and again, I, you know, that's all speculation, but where, where, where it ultimately plays out is I think whether or not he's on staff next year in terms of his, his mindset and thought process. But, um, yeah, you got anything to comment on 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 the mailbag from that standpoint? And then let's let's see if we could dive into Court's question here about about the big picture with PSU. Uh, we could just go big picture. Let's go big picture. All right. Um, as far as so what was it? What was the question again? Oh, she talked about alignment. Her thing was is you know now now um, you know what are your thoughts on PSU as a whole moving forward? by um, showing the alignment coach Franklin has always talked about, you know, we, we paid for an offensive coordinator. We're going to pay for a defensive coordinator. Um, you know, the spending's there from the athletic department standpoint to be competitive. Right. <clears throat> um, what are your thoughts there? Yeah. As I said, you know, we've kind of been that third team. We have been no kind of, we've been that third squad in the big 10 scratching at the door to be, you know, in the big 10 championship, playoff conversation for a few years now right and with the realignment what happens do we stay right there or obviously elevate as we all want or with the some more talented squads coming in and shifting around you know it'll be fun to watch kind of how we balance that you know the schedule is not getting any easier Uh, Oregon's coming in with a top recruiting class as we talked about last last pod you know we'll see well we got a new quarterback as well so It'll be fun to watch. USC is always going to have talent. I'm not, you know, we've seen them kind of flake out a lot. So, you know, not too worried about them. UW is always a tough squad too. see who's that quarterback next few years. But it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, we all want to elevate and be that top dog. But there's some other dogs coming into the the picture as well. So we got to definitely think that kind of, you know, bodes for the hires. You know, we got to pay top dollar. We got to compete, compete, compete in every aspect. And we got to go out there and, and execute as, you know, that's what we've been all wa- waiting for. Yeah, I think I think the coaching staffs around the country have have echoed a certain sentiment that I think ultimately boils down to this question. And then, you know, the big picture on Penn State football, right, is that at the end of the day, the input has to match what the output expectations are. Um y- you have to spend money on coordinators to be competitive. You have to spend money on recruiting to be competitive. You have to spend money on um, facilities to be competitive. So like to your point, it's about competing in everything we do. One of coach Franklin's core values and you have like, it has to be in every single aspect and Penn state fans and, and football fans in general, no matter what your school is, you can't sit there and expect a certain level of production and output without some of those fundamental things in terms of what college football is becoming being in place. So, you know, when you, when you're talking, especially about adding more competitive programs who may or may not be bought into that, that side of things or, or, or probably I would say are probably pretty similar to where Penn state is in that, in that whole field it, at the end of the day, in order to eclipse them, you know, of course there's production on the field. Of course there's talent in your locker room. Of course there's great minds on the football side of things, but then there's also this whole other phase of, of college football now and more of the business side of things that ultimately makes your program just as appealing. So, uh, you know, to simplify all that, it's just expectations uh, needs to match what you're putting into it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, shoot, you got head coach at UConn kind of, applying for his alumni base and his fans about NIL. NIL. I mean, everyone needs to 
everyone needs to buy in. You got to compete. It's it's it is what it is nowadays. So you best believe Penn State. We need the same kind of uh, you know outreach and support. I know it. I know it. And then uh, this was an interesting one I saw on X from Brad English. Um, I see a lot of people trying to compare Tom to Manny. That's the first thing we cannot do is to try to compare the two. Uh, You'll be very disappointed uh, if you try to compare Tom to Manny. No one will call a game the same way Manny did, not even Dex. So I thought that was a great point. That's part of the reason why I touched on it in in our main subject line. But I think it's a great point to hammer home. We, we so often think that in the sports world, players and coaches alike are robots. And there's this word that gets thrown around so much in system and this and that. And I talk about it with quarterback play all the time. It's like, yeah, somebody's going to bring in a system, but at the end of the day, there's fundamentals to, to what happens. And I think similar to the fundamentals of executing a football play, there's fundamentals to coaching and coaching the players to execute a football play. And it's like, does Tom have those things? I think so. Otherwise I don't think he would have lasted as long as he had, had has in this, in this profession. So when it comes down to it, it's like, I'm looking more at the intrinsic value and like what's going to ultimately get players to play sound, play fast and play confident because then everything else is going to take care of itself. Um, he could he could come in with any philosophy he wants to. Then he's just got to shuffle the deck and say, okay, you know, this guy now is no longer a three tech. He's a nose guard and it, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I just think it's the conversation of system and, and comparison and contrasting to, to, to previous people. It's natural, but it's not realistic. And Brad, great point. And I just wanted to hammer that home that it's, it's just, it's naturally going to happen, but we need to refrain from that as much as possible as we watch and see how things unfold because everybody's got their own flavor. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's not always plug and play, as you kind of alluded to. Fans, whatever sport, free agency, oh, this guy's great. Even the transfer portal. You know, we touched on it last week, possible receivers and this and that. It's not always a magical solution. Oh, this guy was great here, so it's going to just, you know, fall into place here. Obviously, we hope, but as you said, you know, coaching and the off season and, you know, getting guys ready to go and it, it all formulates together. So definitely a good point. And hopefully the, as you said, it is natural. Hopefully the players and the team, which obviously is most important, don't fall into that too much. As we said, last year was last year. Every year is a new team. And uh, the guys, the guys will buy in. And as you said, they'll fly around. Whatever gets guys flying around, especially on defense. I mean, you can fix a lot of problems playing fast. So. That's that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. So give a couple other shout outs. Like I said, you know, there was a lot of back and forth around the Tom Allen uh, speculation. So uh, Andrew Mullen, we appreciate your comments. Um, Greg Stagraman, good little handle there. You were the guy that threw the decks, didn't want the job in there. You credited on three. Interesting little okay. twist. You made okay. sure to comment on everybody that was all about the decks hire and what happened. So okay. we appreciate that. And then obviously, of course, Smith 95, there's, there's, there's a couple other folks, but you know, we, we, we obviously appreciate the interaction. It definitely helps us drive the conversation to, to what you guys want to hear. So, um, as always, keep them coming. We'll keep asking the questions and, uh, we appreciate the support. Always, always. With that be, um, whatever week it is, like we said, four, 14, 15, something like that, uh, all good things have to come to an end. We are out. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, make sure you follow us on all our socials, State Media PSU. Follow our uh, mothership, Mercury. Um, pumping out all the best content we can. Make sure you also check out the merch. Got a couple days before uh, Christmas, you know, New Year's. Maybe some of those early birthday presents. You know, I, I don't, I don't know what you guys do. I don't know how you do it, but check the merch store out. We've been pumping a bunch of money into that, and it's it's been going well. So we appreciate the support there. Um, And uh, we'll catch you guys on the flip side.